I'm basically perpetually unhappy with my setup for development and on a constant quest to make things not suck. To be honest, I'm still not happy with it, but it is infinitely better now than in my using the mouse in VS Code days. So in this video, I'm going to give you a high level overview of the hardware, software and processes I'm using to make it feel like my workflow doesn't suck. And the video would be too long if I went into detail on everything. So if there is anything you'd like to see a deeper dive on, just let me know in the comments. Okay, so let's start with the main interface between my physical body and the computer, the keyboard. So I got one of those trendy split keyboards, specifically the Moonlander. Not just because I thought it was really cool and it has flashy lights, but originally mostly for the ergonomics of being able to type with my arms in a more natural position. But the real game changer turned out to be the Oryx software it comes with. You can customize the keyboard layout to an insane degree. Uh, just look at my ridiculous keyboard layout. So I went way down the rabbit hole on this and ended up creating at least 50 different variations of my keyboard layout. A lot of the design here is centered around the ergonomic benefit of generally not having to move my fingers more than one key away from the home row ever. Letters are on one layer, numbers on another, symbols on another, navigation stuff on another, a layer for controlling the mouse with the keyboard, which I don't often use, and this is my anti-toddler layer. So holding and pressing specific keys toggles which layer I am on, which basically allows me to cram all the keys for the keyboard into a much smaller space. So once I got used to it, this did somewhat increase my typing speed, but for me, the more important aspects are the ergonomics and that it just feels a lot more smooth. So if you want to study this layout in more detail or just straight up download it, I'll have a link to the configuration in the description. Now there is one particularly special key here and that is the hyper key. If you're not familiar with a hyper key, it's just a key that is the equivalent of holding alt shift control and command. In other words, a key combo you would otherwise never realistically hit. So we can use this to trigger some special things. So I have the Better Touch tool app installed and I've used this to set up a few shortcuts to open various programs. But more importantly, I have Hyper J set up to open the iTerm hotkey window. So at any point in time, I can hit this key combo and instantly have a terminal in my face and I can just as easily hide it again. I can hit Hyper M to quickly switch to another program, Hyper U to jump back to Chrome and again Hyper J to pop open the terminal again. Now let's get into code editing and why I use NeoVim as my code editor. One thing I love so much about using a terminal based editor is that I can so quickly pop up my coding environment whenever I want it and easily switch to any project. It also makes it super easy to flick backwards and forwards between looking at docs, for example, or getting AI to code for me. Since it is so fast and convenient to switch screens, I pretty much always just use one monitor now. So my workflow generally goes something like this. I can pop open my terminal, and then thanks to Zoxide and Tmux, I can switch between various projects easily with this fuzzy finder. I just hit Control A and T and type the project I want, and then it takes me to a Tmux session for that project. If I already had a session running from before, it will just pick up where it left off. And if you're unfamiliar with Tmux, the general idea is that it allows you to take a single terminal window and turn it into multiple terminals. So within a Tmux session, I can have multiple terminals open like this, uh, maybe I have one for NeoVim, one for serving the app, and one for running tests, and I can easily switch between them. So I usually prefer to have separate full screen terminals like this, but if you prefer, you can also split multiple terminals in one screen like this. I will sometimes do this when I need to reference two separate projects at once, but otherwise, if I want to display code side by side, I'll just use NeoVim's window splitting feature. So now let's get into NeoVim itself. I'm not going to talk about the general concepts of code editing in Vim or how I have everything configured. I'll try to just give you a sense of what my code editing workflow looks like in NeoVim. So we're already at the point where I've opened up a Tmux session using Zoxide. Now I just type nvim dot to open up NeoVim in my current directory and I will get a screen that looks like this. So this is the result of a file tree plugin, which probably loses me some NeoVim points, but I like it. I generally navigate files just by zooming around in here. Once I'm editing, I'll switch between files either by jumping over to the file tree window and opening a new file, or I often also fuzzy find for file names. And another thing I very frequently do is just grep over the entire project and open a file that way. So maybe I'm looking for a particular function and this allows me to open the file that contains that function. So once I have opened multiple files, I'll generally navigate between them through using jump lists. 
So I won't explain jump lists in depth here, but basically it allows you to move backwards and forwards through motions you've made in Vim. So if I've done something that's taken me from one file to another file, I can go back through my jump list to get back to that previous file or even where I was previously within the same file. And I also frequently navigate by hovering over a particular function or type or whatever and hitting GD, which will take me directly to the file that contains that thing's definition. And again, then I can easily jump back to where I was previously by going backward through the jump list. I've got a ton of little quality of life improvements in my NeoVim config, uh, but that'd have to be another video. But my config for NeoVim is completely public, so I'll link to that in the description if you want to check it out. And most of it has been stolen from other people anyway. One thing I use constantly though that I just have to shout out is LazyGit. Uh, I can pop that open in NeoVim by hitting leader GS, and it's pretty much the only way I use Git now. So I already have a separate video on lazy Git specifically. So if you want to check that out, I'll also link to that in the description. So the most insane thing I've added to my development workflow is this little tool I've made. So I'll leave the explanation of this to another video if you're interested, but the key idea for the purpose of this video is that it allows me to keep my tabs organized. So I can just go to a particular location to launch the tabs I have saved for a particular project or task and just as easily leave a location and go to another one. So this has helped with my sanity a great deal as the number of tabs I have open at any time is usually less than 10, even though I'm switching between lots of different projects constantly. I don't have to carry around all the tabs from all of my projects all at the same time. So since I generally have less tabs open, I can easily jump around from tab to tab with the keyboard. So I have an extension that numbers the tabs and it makes it easier to jump to any tab by hitting command plus that number. And I also use the Vimium extension, which adds some Vim key bindings to the browser. For example, I can scroll up and down with D and U. Uh, I can hit F to see all of the links available on the page and then hit the corresponding key combo to click the link. I can also hit GI to focus an input on the page. So there are some annoying things about this plugin, but in general, uh, I have been enjoying it. So that's most of what I'm doing with my workflow at the moment. Uh, I'm still trying to improve it, but I am reasonably happy with it now. Uh, if you want to see videos that dive deeper into any one specific thing I mentioned in this video, just let me know in the comments. And if you found this video interesting at all, please consider a like and subscribe before you go. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back here for the next video.